After being selected for a top secret project, a recent graduate pilot and top of his class rose to the skies aboard a McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II for his first exercise. However, as he was flying above the safe Nevada desert, he soon noticed that a MiG-21 was trailing behind him. Startled, the pilot scoured his cockpit, searching for a way to down the enemy. What he didn't know was that these fighters were secretly acquired by the U.S. Air Force in an effort to learn more about Soviet aircraft engineering. Barely anyone was aware that the Western superpower had a secret squadron made up of Soviet fighters in combat service, especially not the Soviet Union. The Power of the Dogfight With the development of air-to-air -air missile technology in the 1950s, it seemed as though dogfighting was a thing of the past. As such, Aircraft engineers at the biggest manufacturers in the country began prioritizing other aspects while designing new aircraft. The first of the newest generation of American jet fighters was the United States Navy's F-4 Phantom II, designed without a cannon from the start. Meanwhile, the newest Phantom units in the Navy and the Marine Corps were insufficiently trained in classic air-to-air -air combat, with a mere 10 flight training sessions. And as a new decade arrived, only a few pilots knew enough about the craft. The outbreak of the Vietnam War would soon make the top officials regret this decision. The Air Force and Navy suffered massive losses to enemy Russian-made aircraft, air-to-air -air missiles, and surface-to-air missiles over the North Vietnamese skies, and by 1968, roughly 22% of U.S. aircraft were lost to MiGs. To improve their accuracy ratio and reinvigorate the American fighter force's ability to dogfight, both the Air Force and the Navy ran several specialized training programs. They included establishing the first aggressor squadrons, groups trained to simulate realistic tactics and flying techniques in military war games. According to unclassified data, not one Navy pilot managed to defeat the MiG-17 during the initial tests. Dissatisfied with the Air Force's fighter pilot training, Vietnam veteran Colonel Gail Peck came up with the idea of a more realistic program to practice aerial combat using real enemy aircraft. Peck was a former F-4 pilot who worked at the Department of Defense, and after winning the support of active Air Force General Hoyt S. Vanderberg, Jr., he launched the Constant Peg program. Flying with the Enemy Named after Vandenberg's call sign and Colonel Peck's wife, the program's mission was to train U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps pilots and weapons systems officers in aerial combat tactics, giving them the knowledge and the confidence to strike Russian aircraft with more accuracy. Such methods were developed with classic dogfighting in mind, but also with new approaches that surged during the Vietnam War and from more modern aircraft technology. The U.S. Air Force activated the 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron for the program, and they were nicknamed the Red Eagles. This squadron operated as a tool of the government's Foreign Aircraft Technology Program. Because the use of enemy warplanes was a dangerous gambit, the mere existence of the Red Eagles and the Constant Peg program was of the utmost secrecy. As such, the exact numbers and facts regarding the actual number of aircraft and the overall history of the program remain classified. Still, it is known that getting a foreign-made aircraft for the squadron was no easy task. Soviet fighters were collected one at a time from all over the world to complete the force. And after capturing two MiG-17Fs and a MiG-21 from the Syrian and Iraqi troops, Israel loaned the Red Eagles their first-ever Soviet jets. The Americans also offered Indonesia the new, sleek Northrop F-5 Tiger II in exchange for a few of their Russian fighters, receiving 12 MiGs in return. And Korea, Pakistan, and Cambodia eventually came on board as well. In addition to bartering, United States officials scoured scrapyards, crash sites, and abandoned warehouses to rescue more Russian aircraft. Still, during the 1970s and 1980s, Egypt, East Germany, Somalia, and China also became potential suppliers. It is even said that Egyptian President Anwar Sadat sold one dozen MiG-23s to be used in the program in exchange for 36 Phantoms. By 1985, the Red Eagles had approximately 26 aircraft that ranged from MiG-21s to several MiG-23s and MiG-17s. As the aircraft were not known for their durability, maintaining them was a significant challenge. With no instruction manuals, technical data, and few spare parts, the Red Eagle's personnel pioneered new techniques to keep the small yet irreplaceable fleet aloft. 
The 4477th also relied on the Central Intelligence Agency and an American manufacturer for replacements. The Best of the Best Uncovering the true story of the secret American-owned MiGs in the Constant Peg program is quite challenging, as most information has been destroyed or classified. The 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron operated out of a secret airfield built in the isolated Tonopah Test Range Airport in Nevada. The remote site concealed two different programs at the time, Constant Peg during the day and pilot training for the secret F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter at night. The region shares some airspace with the infamous Area 51. It was soon designated Red Square and concealed from prying eyes. While the existence of the aggressor squadrons flying American planes was no secret, the Soviet Union never found out about the 4477th's use of Russian-made aircraft training exercises. To help with the deception, the aircraft were decorated with Russian paint jobs. And to further conceal the area, the experts would take into account the Soviet satellite flying above and store all the aircraft in hangars until it moved away. A Shocking Discovery Only the best and most accomplished pilots in the United States were selected for the Red Eagles training. The chosen ones were often top-ranking graduates from the Air Force Test Pilot School or those from the Naval Test Pilot School at NAS Patuxent River, and all had to have at least 2,000 flight hours under their belt. According to John Mann Clark, commander of the 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron from 1985 to 1987, the students would go through a Sunday to Friday course. By the end of the week, it was expected that they could down a MiG the first time they spotted one. Given the value and vulnerability of the aircraft, the Soviet jets were never flown at night or in bad weather. Meanwhile, the true nature of the constant PEG program was often kept from prospective students until the last minute. During the pilot's first training exercise with the mysterious squadron, the air crew members would be suddenly shocked upon spotting a MiG approaching them in the Nevada desert. This helped diminish first-time shock upon exposure to a Russian aircraft if faced with a real dogfight. The second exposure to the foreign MiGs during training consisted of common basic flight maneuvers and thorough information about the aircraft. These two initial exercises illustrated the MiG's strengths and weaknesses in relation to the pilot's own fighter aircraft. Dogfighting in a week. The final and most challenging training stage involved applying all the knowledge in actual fights. During these lessons in two-on-two -two or one-on-one -on -one air combat tricks and simulated dogfights, the student pilots would counterattack with learned Soviet tactics, including offensive and defensive maneuvers. Then, after each training phase, the pilots would engage in extensive debriefing sessions to reinforce the most effective attack methods. As time went on, the Air Force's fleet of Soviet aircraft grew in both reliability and numbers, and the Red Eagle Squadron expanded operations to include multi-aircraft training sorties, as well as participation in the USAF's large-scale combat exercises. The MiGs also fake-attacked B-52 Stratofortress strategic bombers and C-130 Hercules transport aircraft, simulating troops and cargo landing operations. The Red Eagle's task was not to earn a victory, per se, although it happened often. In fact, the main goal of the Constant Peg program was to teach fellow American pilots the strength and weaknesses of Soviet aircraft. According to some accounts, the pilot's Achilles heel was the MiG-23. While they loved its speed, members of the 4477th complained of both mid-flight instability and the difficulty to pilot it. Still, with no official technical documentation, the Red Eagle's pilots had to learn from their own mistakes. These failures proved too much more than once and three pilots lost their lives while experimenting with the aircraft. Stepping Stone By the late 1980s, after the introduction of fourth-generation fighters, just as the Russian threat began to wind down, the Red Eagles performed fewer flights. The final 4477th Squadron flight took place on March 8, 1988, after suffering from a constant lack of funding and the Red Eagles were officially disbanded in 1990. From then on, the Soviet aircraft were either used as targets in practice exercises, as exhibits, or went under permanent storage. In 10 years of active service, the Air Force's Red Eagles flew more than 15,000 sorties, training almost 6,000 airmen. The activities of the 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron 
brought a fundamental change in the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps air combat tactics. Also, the Constant Peg program is credited with inspiring the still active Air Force's Red Flag program and the Navy's Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor program, or Top Gun. Despite the scarce details available, the Red Eagles revitalized the once forgotten art of dogfighting, and many experts view the overwhelming success of American air power in Desert Storm as proof of that. During the 1990 and 1991 conflicts, the United States Air Force pilots destroyed 40 enemy aircraft without a single loss of their own. And while the Red Eagle's existence has been declassified at this point, foreign aircraft technology evaluation most likely continues to take place, keeping American pilots as nimble as ever. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed our video, and don't forget to share it with someone who might like it. Also, subscribe to this and all our Dark Documentaries channels for lesser-known stories about the United States Armed Forces, and stay tuned.